Thank you for joining us for our first Mobile Cause webinar of the year. To get 2019 off to a great start, we will be helping you create your annual plan. So, are you ready to jumpstart your annual fundraising game plan? Today's webinar, we will help you even out the peaks and valleys of fundraising by creating an engaging annual fundraising plan that incorporates a monthly giving program. The stable, predictable revenue generated by monthly donors is enormously valuable to nonprofits of all sizes and can help you maximize the lifetime value of your supporters. We will also provide you the blueprint for creating a successful annual fundraising plan, along with examples you can easily incorporate into your own plan. We want you to participate in our discussion. Please submit any questions you have into the questions box located at the bottom of your control panel. We will answer them during the presentation and at the end we will have a Q&A session with our experts. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation and as a reminder we will send the recording and slides to all registrants after the webinar. Today's webinar is presented by Mobile Cause. Mobile Cause is a cloud-based fundraising and communication management solution for nonprofits of all sizes. Key features include ongoing giving, text to donate, event fundraising with live thermometer, peer-to-peer -peer and crowdfunding campaigns, donor engagement, mobile messaging, email communications, and robust reporting and analytics. Mobile, mobile Cause believes 100% of donations should go directly to your cause, which is why they don't charge any transaction fees and have the industry's lowest credit card processing fees. Now, let me introduce today's panel of experts. Matt Scott is a CEO and founder of Cosmic, a marketing consulting firm that empowers nonprofits to leverage technology, storytelling, and design to raise money and awareness online. Cosmic brings decades of marketing and fundraising, fundraising experience from within startups and 100-year-old institutions to help you scale your nonprofit and amplify your cause. Prior to Cosmic, Matt was a vice president of development at Team Rubicon and helped them scale from $250,000 in revenue in 2019, sorry, 2011, to $30 million in 2017. Matt is also in demand on the speaking circuit, where his passion and energy for nonprofits shines through. Our spec second speaker for today is Sarah Baker, and Sarah is a digital marketing strategist at Mobile Cause. Sarah creates and sets up fundraising campaigns for Mobile Cause customers, along with digital fundraising and donor engagement strategies. Her work has enabled hundreds of nonprofits to accelerate their fundraising efforts. We have an information packed agenda for you today where our speakers will cover how to create a monthly giving strategy, how to grow monthly giving programs after you've launched them, Building your annual fundraising game plan, tips on recurring giving, and they will also share a case study of an annual fundraising plan. So before we dive into your annual fundraising plan, we have a quick poll question. And I'm just going to launch this poll for you. And the poll is, is your 2019 annual fundraising strategy complete? And you have two options there, yes or no. So we'll just give you a few seconds to, um, to submit your response. And once we've had most people submit their responses, then we will uh, shut the poll and we'll share the results. All right, it looks like most people have voted. All right, so here are our results. Wow, that's pretty interesting. It looks like that most of you have not completed your annual fundraising plan. Matt, what do you think about these results? Thank you very much. I, I guess my first reaction is I'm really glad that you're all attending this webinar. Um, and I think it's perfectly natural. We're just coming out of year end. We're 15 days into the year and everyone's still kind of recuperating from the, you know, really the biggest part of the fundraising season. But I think this highlights the need for us to dig into today's content. I'm really excited to talk about monthly giving and the role that it plays, especially here in this first quarter into developing a robust um, 
you know, kind of diversified fundraising plan. So with that, I think we should dive right into the content. Um, as, as you heard during the introduction, my name is Matt Scott. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Cosmic. And I wanna start by thanking Mobile Cause for hosting us here today and for all of you for attending. Uh, we really appreciate you, you joining the webinar. Um, the whole purpose of, of coming together today is to empower you all to, to get out there and to build or relaunch a robust monthly giving program. So I hope that you're gonna get a lot out of uh, today's webinar. It's all about you. It's all about the opportunities um, that your organization can put in place in this quarter. Uh, throughout the presentation, we're gonna use examples of some of our clients uh, on the smaller end as well as the larger end and hopefully provide a diversified kind of experience um, for all of our webinar attendees. With that, I would like to take control. Yep, go ahead, Matt, and take control. I'm having a little trouble. Oh, is that me or you? That was me, so go ahead. Okay, we'll charge forward with that then. Um, yeah, so, so kind of starting off, uh, you know, what are we going to cover here? We're going to cover how to build, launch, and grow your monthly giving program. And we're really going to primarily focus on the building phase. And this applies whether you have already have an existing recurring giving program or you're fresh out of the gate looking to start it. And that's because the same principles apply for both launching as well as rebooting your monthly giving program. So during today's webinar, we're really going to focus a lot on the building phase. Um, because that's where the planning is. That's where the action happens. Uh, we are going to cover some briefly some best practices for launch and launching and growing. Um, but again, I really want to focus on, you know, the building phase. In case you're not already convinced as to why monthly giving program is important for your organization, an important key element of your 2019 kind of giving strategy or fundraising plan is really kind of three things stand out to me. First, for all of our clients, they really appreciate the predictable, unrestricted revenue that comes from monthly giving, right? The second piece is it it's really builds this tribal aspect. It, it builds a sense of belonging, a sense of being something bigger than yourself. Um, and that's a really key element because with that really strong connection to your brand, um, it, it means that people are more likely to stay on as, as supporters. And finally, perhaps most importantly, uh, it's all about increasing that total lifetime value of your supporters. There's this poll or a stat rather that that when they looked across all of their clients, they saw that 440 percent um, monthly donors on average get 440 percent more than one time donors to an organization. And if you look at stats from all the various benchmark studies, you'll see that that trend is is holds true. So monthly giving is a really important uh, part of your giving strategy. Uh, next slide, please. So diving right into the building, uh, you know, what goes into how do you develop a strong monthly giving program? It really starts with these five key elements. You want to start with goal setting and then you want to move into building out these donor personas specifically geared or targeted toward monthly donors. You want to build a really strong, robust, branded campaign, something that, again, makes your, your members of that monthly giving program feel connected to the impact that their monthly gift is having. Of course, you want to have the right technology stacked up. You got to have the right technology in order to process gifts, to engage your supporters. Um, and then you ultimately want to have a multi- uh, kind of a multifaceted, multi-channel plan. And we're going to talk a lot about today how do you reach each and every one of your constituents on their preferred platform with their preferred message at their preferred time. Uh, next slide, please. So starting right out the gate, how do you set those goals during this planning process? And January, February really needs to be all about that planning process. So starting with the goals, 
Um, you know, everybody knows this, but really making those smart goals, making them specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound is critical. Um, but how do you do it, right? We like to advise our clients to start by segmenting your existing file and looking at your, your donors that just made a year end contribution is a really great place to start. Um, some big trends that you really want to look for are donors who have given multiple times in the past 12 months. These folks tend to be the ones that are most likely to join your monthly giving program. Um, other key segments are new donors, right? These are people who have given in the last six weeks. And what you want to do is you really want to set those specific conversion goals for each and every segment. So an example of a specific goal for, say, new donors might be we will convert 2.5% of all new donors through our new donor welcome series. By setting out these really specific and measurable and time bound goals uh, early on in the planning process, you're setting yourself up to then build out specific strategies across all of your channels to achieve those goals. And that's really important to be able to measure where you should be focusing your effort. Which channel is working? What message is working? To whom should we be reaching out to? Those are the critical questions that you want to answer throughout the year. And the only way to do it is to set specific goals early on. Uh, next slide, please. So now we have these goals and we know I just talked about two key segments. Those were donors who've given multiple times in the last 12 months, as well as new donors. But there's so much more to building out robust donor personas. Um, and I want to talk first about you know, how do you go about this process? Well, we could do a whole hour long webinar on building out donor personas and we have some resources available for nonprofits to do just that. But at the very core, you really want to focus on, um, on, on this concept of the why, you know, what is the purpose, cause or belief, the reason your monthly giving program exists? And if you start with that question of like, why is it that the, that they, that the program exists? It's going to help you define your donor personas. Um, you really want to connect your your potential supporters with the impact that they're going to have in the field. And so, walking through an exercise for developing personas is is a really key component to figuring out who you should be speaking to, on what platform you should be speaking with them, and what message you ought to include. So take some time out to do a little bit of research and test your assumptions, right? Um, before you build out this branded campaign, you want to look at your existing base of supporters, try and come up with big buckets of segmentations. Then you want to walk through this exercise of kind of characterizing their thinking, their feelings, and their doings. And you want to ultimately get to a point where you've got somewhere between kind of two to four or four to six, if you're a larger nonprofit, personas. Um, and this will really guide you in your content creation. It'll really guide you in terms of what message you want to share. Next slide, please. So once you've got kind of these personas developed, that will really inform your branding, the branding of your monthly giving program. This should have its own brand identity that stands alone, but firmly ties into, again, that impact that, that the monthly donor is going to have in the field. I want to share three examples from our clients that I just really love. First and foremost, uh, Team Rubicon Support Squad. Team Rubicon is a disaster relief organization that leverages the skills and experience of military veterans to respond to disasters. And by creating the support squad, there's this tribal sense, this, this feeling that as a member of the support squad, I can empower veterans to respond to disasters, to respond to communities in need. Um, it's also really closely tied into the brand of the military veterans with that support squad. Another example is Friends of Sally. Uh, Walk with Sally is a nonprofit that essentially provides mentorship for kids impacted by cancer. And their program is their their mentorship program is called the Friendship. And so Friends of Sally is another really cool way to tie directly into both the impact that someone's having as well as that sense of community. The final example I want to share is perhaps my favorite one. Um, when we worked with Tusk USA to define what their uh, monthly giving program would be, 
we looked at what impact they were having. So they ultimately work to save iconic animals that are being poached uh, across Africa. And we came up with this concept of game changers. It gives, by joining game changers, like again, you're, you're kind of coming into that sense of community and you realize that your monthly donation is actually having a tangible impact. There's the game element, which was a play on big game. Um, and you're changing the outcome right now in the field. So when you're thinking about branding, the best thing to do is to think about those personas, to go back to that and to think, what is it that this person or this group of people would want? How would they want to be connected to it? How would they want to be connected to the work that we're doing and the impact that we're having? Um, and then you want to tie that branded theme for your program back into uh, the overall brand elements of your organization and tie it back into the field. Next slide. Um, there you go. Next slide. Perfect. Uh, so the tech stack, um, this is really, really important. I know in the opening, you know, kind of introductions, we talked about the incredible features that mobile cows has. Ultimately, you want to make sure that you have the proper technology in place. Some b big key sweeping needs are, do you have a, a donor management system, some kind of CRM to store the activities? Do you have a way to process your gifts? Do you have a multi-channeled engagement mechanism, meaning text messages, chat bots, um, email marketing? Uh, do you have a paid social and paid uh, search strategy? Do you have the tools in place to track and measure the performance? These are the questions that you need to be asking when you're thinking about setting up your tech stack. And this is gonna look different for organizations of different sizes. But I think one of the themes that we find is that people in a big data-driven world think that they need to measure everything. And what we actually work with our clients to do is to strip it down and think about what do you have to measure? What do you have to measure in order to really demonstrate the impact of your monthly giving program? So things like you know, number of site visits, conversion rates, channel preferences, and ultimately what is the ROI? Which channel is driving the most traffic, m most conversions? So think about that when you're setting up your tech stack. And again, I apologize for jumping over this one quickly, but at the end of the day, we could do a, you know, multiple webinars on tech stack, but I think at, at its core, strip it down to being as simple as possible. How do I reach my constituents? How do I measure how effective that strategy is? Um, and how do I make sure that I can process donations simply and easily? Next slide. So you heard me talk about this earlier on. It's all about meeting each and every one of your constituents on their preferred channel with their preferred message at their preferred time. And one of the things, places that we like to really start is sitting down and thinking about like, what is the channel plan, right? Meaning where are those donor, now that we've had our donor personas clearly defined, what channel is are those personas on? Where can we meet our donors? How can we share our message? Um, and there's obviously a ton of channels out there, everything from channels that you own, like your website, your blog, um, to ones you don't own, like social media, for example. And it's really important that you balance between channels that you own versus ones that you don't. And you want to have a consistent brand across all channels. So by sitting down and thinking about, you know, where are where is our core audience? Where are those people that we're trying to reach? And then because you've already gone through and you've developed a really strong brand, you can begin to incorporate those brand elements um, across all channels. So if it's video or if it's imagery um, or if it's via text message, what voice, what tone do you want to be using? How do you connect back to the, the branded um, monthly giving program that you originally presented? Next slide. So we just went through kind of those big five elements for really kind of the planning phase of, of a monthly giving program. So just a quick recap, those were, you know, how do I set up tangible, realistic, um, time bound and measurable goals? Um, once you have those clearly defined, then who is it that you're trying to reach and what message is really going to resonate with them? 
That's that persona development exercise. From there, you want to build a really strong, well-branded campaign, something that ties back to the impact of your organization and creates a sense of tribe or a sense of belonging. These monthly donors are worth um, kind of recognizing in a unique and special way. So you want to have a strong brand that ties in that. Of course, you want to do a quick tech check um, before you launch your program. You want to make sure that you've got a mechanism to process donations, a way to capture that donor information. You want to make sure that you've you've got kind of all the way from acquisition through cultivation, the key elements um, of, of a tech stack. And then finally, you want to have that channel plan in place. You want to identify, you know, what are the preferred channels for our key audience for the donor personas? So now you're going to move into the launch phase. And this is where we kind of get down into detail. And what I'd love for everybody, especially the 90% who don't have that plan yet to identified is what actions can you take over the next, say, four weeks to sit down and really incorporate, you know, monthly giving into your overall plan for 2019. Um, if you do that in the next kind of four to six weeks, then you should be on track to really launch your monthly giving program by really March, April. And that's a prime time to do it because everybody's kind of come out of your end. You can align your monthly giving ask to your strong program, clearly defined programmatic goals that the organization has set. So during the launch phase of this presentation, we're gonna cover four big tactics, kind of communication plan, content strategy, asset creation, and how to launch your time bound campaign. With that, next slide. So it starts with that communications plan. Again, we already have that channel plan. We've already identified that we're gonna reach people on SMS, we're gonna reach them on uh, email, we're gonna reach them on social. You've got that channel plan, but now, we need to think about the content piece of that of that plan. So it starts with who, you know, the segmentations of who are you reaching? And again, we already went through that process earlier, right? We looked at our database, we identified kind of big sweeping trends. And then we've got the what, the content piece. Um, how frequently will we reach out to them? When are we gonna reach out to them? And tying back in our channel plan, on what channel are we going to be reaching out to them? I think it's really important that you customize a content plan for each channel. So you wanna make sure that you have, um, for example, strong imagery or uh, you use video content across text and social. And then on email, you wanna incorporate more personalized communication. Uh, this will not only help you kind of break through some of the spam filters that a lot of the email, um, e email service providers have a difficult time making it through these days, but it also shows that there is a person behind these communications. Now, just because it's personalized doesn't mean that it's not on brand. That's really important. You still wanna be on brand across all channels. Uh, the other thing you really wanna think about with content is, is you know, the goal is to inspire action. So you wanna have really clear, concise call to action on all of your various communications. It doesn't always mean that you're making a monthly gift ask. You're not saying convert right now but you're, you're driving them towards content that's gonna inspire them to give that monthly gift. Um, again, I wanna talk a little bit about, this is a really specific in the weeds tactical example of how uh, strong segmentation and spe specified content to reach a specific audience on email really drives um, drives kind of your, your content strategy. So. Let's take a donor, for example, who gave between $100 and $250 during your year-end fundraising appeal. Um, we advise our clients, and this is through tons of testing across really dozens and dozens of monthly giving programs and campaigns that we've built. Uh, we advise our clients to take that number and divide it by 12 and then multiply it by 1.5. And that's the ask amount that you should be making. So let's take a donor for $100, for example, we divide that out and multiply it 1.5, uh, that's $12.50 a month. Now that's $150, so you've already seen a 50% increase over their last gift. So you know that it's it's tangible, that it's doable um, for that supporter, but it is also an increase. And we like to think about breaking this up into major kind of segments, and that really is gonna depend on your, your database. But 
That's what we mean by having a really clear communications plan is you break it down by segmentation. You look at it, you say, okay, how can we um, prompt or encourage somebody to give a really specific amount? Uh, next slide. So now you've got, you know, kind of how you're going to communicate with them and where you're going to communicate with them. And it's all about <clears throat> how they are, you know, solving a problem or addressing a specific need. So we talked about that 1250 amount. Uh, this is an example from one of our clients, Operation Gratitude. They send care packages to troops um, overseas. And what's really awesome about them is $15 funds a care package. So it's really easy to tie it back in. So if we use that example that we had before at that $100 level, um, perhaps at $15, you position that as an ask and you say, can you send one care package a month? So kind of there, you really want to just get down to solving. Um, how is this supporter solving and addressing that specific need? Next slide. Now, creative assets. You really want to think about, again, that overall branded campaign, right? So earlier I talked about Team Rubicon as an example, and they have the support squad. Um, and actually they do their, uh, this campaign was from um, Veterans Day and they did a monthly giving ask around Veterans Day. And so the campaign was 11-11 because Veterans Day falls on November 11th. And you can see here that all of the creative assets tie back into that programmatic identity and that campaign theme. Um, so we like to walk our clients through a process of first kind of defining big sweeping themes, come up with a mood board, do that research on the donors, identify what's going to resonate with them, and then build out all of these key elements that tie back into that strong brand identity and that theme. Um, and you can see, perhaps it's kind of small here, but you can see that the specific giving levels tie back into the impact that they're having. Next slide. So we just ran really quickly through kind of what that launch plan looks like. And, um, and just a quick recap that included a strong communications plan, content strategy that really kind of ties back into the channel and to the audience and to tying those donors into the impact that they're having. We talked briefly about creative assets and how you want to really kind of tie those back in. Um, now it's time to press go, right? Now it's time to launch that that time bound campaign. Um, one of the things that just quick tip is, you know, we find that the monthly giving kind of launch or reboot programs, uh, campaigns that are best length is around two weeks. We've experimented with four, we've experimented with one. Um, it really varies depending on organization, but big broad streaking recommend stroke recommendation is around that two week kind of mark. Um, you want to really develop a cadence and a communications plan that incorporates, okay, which channels are we gonna send messages on on which days? How frequently are we gonna send those messages? To whom are we gonna send them? And what are we gonna ask for? Um, one of the other big things you know, that we really oftentimes do during the campaign is a plan is a great place to start to deviate from. And that means don't be afraid to adjust if A, B tests are showing success in key areas. So if you had planned to spend um, lots of time or energy on, on social media, uh, you're going to put ad spend behind there, but you're finding that that's really not working, but you find that text messaging is, divert your attention towards text messaging. Kind of lean into the strengths. Um, some A-B tests, some of our favorites are, you know, how much should we be asking for? What image should we be using? What's the length of the communication? Who, for, who should it come from? Um, these are all tests that you want to kind of run during the campaign and don't be afraid to adjust and fire if something is working. Uh, next slide. So now we're, you know, we've, we've built this really strong uh, recurring giving program. We've successfully launched it with our time-based campaign. Now it's time to really grow it, right? So this kind of looks out into 2019. So some big kind of strategies on how to grow your monthly giving program. First and foremost, you really want to express gratitude. So as people come in to, uh, to giving a monthly gift, you want to make a phone call. You want to send them a personalized handwritten thank you card. You want to put them into a monthly giving donor impact series that specifically calls out the uniqueness of that monthly donor and ties it back into impact. And again, keeping to strong brand and theme. 
You also want to manage churn, right? So you do that because either one, donations are failing or two, like people's situation changes. But more often than not, people um, drop off of monthly gift because they don't they don't feel that sense of belonging. They don't have uh, any idea exactly how their their monthly gift or inv monthly investment is having an impact in the field. And so it's really important to have that strong impact reporting. Also kind of ways to grow big strategies include um, we like to bring all of our clients through one upgrade campaign each year. So this can be a little bit shorter in period. It could be kind of three to five day long kind of upgrade campaign. Um, and, and that's really geared towards, you know, because you express gratitude, because you've created a sense of tribe and because you've reported back the impact of their gift, asking monthly donors to up their gift is, is really effective strategy. And believe it or not, a lot of people sign up to do it. Um, additionally, monthly donors on average will give two to three time two to three one-time gifts per year. So you really want to time those well. You want to focus on emergencies or special campaigns that uh, that will draw out that extra gift. Next slide. So how do you scale kind of monthly giving outside of the time-based campaigns? And there's lots of strategies here. Um, I definitely encourage you to visit cosmic.com or reach out to our team. Our email is crew, C-R-E-W, at cosmic.com. Um, we're here to help serve you. But one of the tactics that everybody can just look at this and take away from it right off the bat is you if you don't already have monthly giving featured on your homepage, that should be your one uh, action item coming out of this is to really feature monthly giving on your homepage. This is a great example from World Wildlife Fund. Um, where they ran an A-B test looking at, you know, site visitors with no MRR on their homepage or a clear call to action to give monthly on their homepage. And, you know, if you look at what the conversion rates looked like, they were 46% when they featured it on their homepage versus just 18% when they did not feature it on their homepage. So I definitely encourage you to take, you know, just easy steps throughout the year to push monthly giving. Another one that we already talked about was, you know, really that new donor welcome series. You really want to be pushing, um, pushing monthly giving to your new supporters. Next slide. So, wow, we just covered a ton. <laughs> um, and I'm just about to hand this, this off uh, to my co-presenter, Sarah, which I know everyone's going to be really excited to hear from. So I definitely encourage you to stay on. I hope you got some value from this. Uh, first bit of the webinar, but we covered a bunch. We covered, you know, how do you really kind of plan for, so building phase, launching phase, and growing phase of your monthly giving program. Um, and uh, ultimately, everyone who's kind of on this webinar will receive our guide to, to in a little bit more detail. Um, and we also have, you know, a 90-day kind of curriculum or action plan on how to build and grow and launch your monthly giving program. So I really want to thank everybody. I hope you got some value from, from what we shared. Um, we covered a lot today about what to do, not necessarily how to do it, um, but I hope you got a few key takeaways. So with that, I want to hand it over Perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matt. That was a very, very interesting and extremely helpful uh, information. Before we actually hear from Sarah on how to create an annual fundraising plan, we have another quick question for our attendees. So I'm just going to launch the poll and there it is. And the question is, do you like what you've seen so far? Would you like to learn more about mobile cause or cosmic? And if you could please um, just put your vote in. All right, we'll just give a few more seconds here to allow everyone to vote. Okay, great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your input. And now we're going to hand it over to Sarah Baker. Sarah, take it away. Thanks, Clara. And thank you, Matt, for giving us that great presentation on setting up some monthly giving strategy. So I'm going to be talking to you guys today about building your annual fundraising game plan. 
So the first thing that we're going to want to do to get started is actually uh, take a look backwards. And Claire, if we can go to the next slide, please. So when we start by looking backwards, we're going to want to look at what we did last year by doing a SWOT analysis. So if you're not familiar, a SWOT analysis involves looking at your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So there's some questions up on the screen that you can sit down and ask yourself as well as ask your team to try to figure out what took place over the past year or couple years. So an example of your strength could be that maybe every year you host a very successful annual 5K. So you know this is a big fundraiser where you're going to bring in your typical donors and raise a lot of money for the year. But maybe one of your weaknesses is that you have a low social media following and you have trouble engaging with your community on your social media channels. But an opportunity you might have from your uh, 5K is if you have a local celebrity participant who's willing to participate in your 5K this year and willing to help you on social media to help drive up that social media following. And then when you think about what's a threat that you could possibly have this year, maybe your staff was shrunk by one or two people. So you have to start thinking about what can you do to make up for that you know, threat and weaknesses by playing up to your strengths and looking out for your opportunities. So after we do our SWOT analysis, our next exercise is going to be looking at setting our yearly goals. So Claire, if we can go to the next slide, thank you. <laughs> so to look at our yearly, oh, just one, one back, please. <laughs> So when we're looking at our yearly goals, what we're going to want to do is use figures from the past year. So we're setting realistic goals. You can think back to Matt's slide where he talked about setting SMART goals. So again, another example that you can think about is maybe your goal is to have 60 new donors in the next year. So how are you going to get those 60 donors in a year? Well, let's divide it down and think about getting five don new donors every month. But how are we going to get five new donors every month? Well, maybe you're going to look at a new channel like social media advertising to bring new followers to your social media page and bring new donors and community to your mission. Okay. So next, when we're starting to think about our yearly goals, we also need to think about who can help us accomplish these. So if we can go to our next slide, please. So when you think about your staff, you may be a small organization, maybe even a staff of one or two people, but your available resources are going to be much more than the one or two people. You have your board members, typically volunteers, um, friends and family, people who've been involved at your organization, and we'll want to think about these people as being the key resources to driving your fundraising game plan for the year. So these individuals, like volunteers, are your ambassadors. They are going to be the ones who help share out your mission. So your resources might be tight when it comes to staff, when it comes to money, um, even when it comes to some of your expertise and skills, but it really isn't because there's this big group of people. Maybe one of your volunteers, you know, is really good and great at Facebook, and they're willing to spend a couple hours a week sitting with you, scheduling out some posts, and making sure that your mission is shared across on those channels. So moving on to the next slide, please. So once we've thought about our strengths, our weaknesses, the resources we have, we have you know a dollar figure or a number of donors that we want to engage. Now, how are we going to get this done? So what we want to do is focus on being donor-centric. And Matt made a lot of really great points about this. 
We want to give our donors a sense of belonging and make them feel part of our community. So when we're making our goals and setting our plans in motion, we need to always keep our donors in mind. What is going to spark and keep their interest for more than a one-day event? What's going to do this is by making them feel like they're a crucial part of your nonprofit story. So when we, we looked at some of Matt's examples, so they will feel like a part of your story if they know that their donations are funding that care package that's going to a real life service member who's serving overseas. If they understand that their dollars and their participation in your org is going to feed a child um, each day of the school year, then they will feel engaged and want to come back and continue to give. Another part of being donor-centric is making sure you're reaching out to the donor wherever they are. So some of the younger generation might never open your direct mail, but they'd open a text message, or they'll engage with you on their Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. So we want to make sure that wherever you're going to get to them, it's easy for them to engage with you, whether that's making a comment on your Facebook page or making a donation through your website, through that text message that you send out to them. We want to make sure it's super easy and convenient for them. So moving on to our next slide, please. So once we have some of these tactics in place, um, we'll want to think about how we're going to actually implement these into the real world. So you need to think about how far in advance do you need to start planning? How many volunteers do you have to work with? What channels are you going to use? And a lot of this goes back to what Matt talked about when you think about personas. So who engages with your organization? What are their typical age ranges and habits? So maybe, you know, Instagram is a new channel to you and it's not necessarily where you want to put your efforts, but Facebook and email are going to continually deliver. That's going to make your life a little bit easier by being more efficient and reaching to your donors rather than shouting out into a void. So implementing these tactics and deciding where the best places are to spend your efforts is going to be crucial to making sure you're going to hit those goals. So again, if your goal is getting five new donors a month, think back to your plan. Okay, you decided social advertising. How are you going to implement that? Where is the budget going to come from? Who's going to actually carry out putting those advertisements out there for you? Next slide, please. So we talked about this again earlier, is reaching your donors where they are. So how you do this is by having a multi-channel fundraising strategy. So you decided you're going to start using more social media to boost your social media following and doing social media advertising. Well, how are you going to do this? Well, maybe this year you're going to start using Facebook Live. You're going to start using Facebook and Instagram stories because you know that social media is where your followers are and where your donors and supporters are, and your emails are getting you know, less open rate and read less and less. You know, or, but you don't want to completely still forget about email. Like I said, while it's maybe a declining um, place to, to get some of your donors and to engage with your volunteers and ambassadors, there still are people who prefer email. So that's why we want to, again, develop those, those personas and hit all of these different channels. So you're still going to be focusing on email. You're gonna reach out to people through social media. You can send out direct text messages. You'll want to be carrying out, like Matt mentioned, your brand throughout all these different places. So it's very easy to recognize that it's your organization who's reaching out to them in these places, especially as you're using newer technology like text messaging or as you're launching into uh, you know, a new social media platform. Okay, so moving into our next slide. 
So to make sure that this plan actually goes into action, you're going to want to sit down with a calendar. You need to make a plan and let's start by working backwards. So if you do have that really successful 5K that you have every year, let's put that on the calendar and work backwards on how we're going to promote that. So we're going to think about when do emails go out? When do people have to register for this? When does fundraising end? Um, put all of these dates on the calendar and then start filling in with that multi-channel strategy in mind. Again, using email, direct mail, text messages, every channel you can think of where your donors are going to be or potential donors so that you can reach them. You're going to want to make sure this content is branded to your organization. It's not the same content in all the different channels, but it's a varied amount of content that all works together and tells your one story of your organization. And, you know, when you're thinking about this calendar, think again about technology and ways to make this more efficient. So as you're planning out this social media, maybe this is something new to you. And like I mentioned earlier, maybe your small staff. But think about technology that you can utilize, like even in-app technology for Facebook, for example, to schedule and automate some of those social media posts. Schedule and automate some of your emails if you're using an email platform. And then make sure even in your calendar, schedule out some time, maybe an hour or so, you know, once a week or every two weeks to relook at this calendar to make sure it's hitting your goals and getting you closer to where you want to be. And then share your calendar, of course, with your entire team to make sure everyone's on the page. So, yep, yeah, just moving on. Sorry, we're running a little short on time. So, of course, like I said, we want to make sure our donors feel valued and involved in your cause by making sure that they're your focus. Let them be part of your community. Like Matt said, they need that sense of belonging. They need to understand specifically how they're helping your organization and how they can help carry out your mission. And that'll help you have a more successful annual fundraising year and plan. Just to give a quick case study, we'll move on to our next slide, where we're going to talk about Girls on the Run of Los Angeles. So what Girls on the Run of Los Angeles did to take their plan into action and grow their fundraising over the year by putting an annual fundraising plan into place is by thinking about actionable goals. So again, you think about actionable goals by setting realistic goals based on what you've been able to do in the past. So Girls on the Run made a realistic financial goal by looking at what they raised last year, looking at what their donors gave, and thinking about their new strategies. So some of their goals were re-engaging lapsed donors. So this goes back to Matt's strategy about improving your monthly giving so you do have that reliable source of income for your organization. And then they focus on that sense of belonging, that creating a culture so people want to be involved with your organization. They planned out you know, specific events that they had held in the past that they know would re-engage with their constituents. Go to the next one. So you can see by creating these actionable goals based on, you know, realistic information, realistic financial goals, they were able to raise more money across the board. So they were able to engage with individual donors, use peer-to-peer -peer fundraising to spread their mission to new donors and new constituents, and got their board to be more involved so that they'd have more success even with a small staff. And they thought about ways to involve, you know, corporate givers that wasn't necessarily just sponsoring their 5K, but getting them involved with volunteering, being close and upfront with the mission of inspiring young girls through running. So with that, I think we are moving on to the 
questions portion. Thank you, Sarah for sharing such valuable information uh, with us. And as a quick reminder to everyone, if you do have any questions, please be sure to submit them into the questions pane located at the bottom of your control panel. Before we jump into the Q&A, let's take another quick poll. So I'm just going to launch that. And that poll is, would you like to learn more about getting campaign creation and set up assistance from a mobile cause digital marketing expert for your annual fundraising plan or another campaign? And you have two options there, yes or no. So please choose your option and, um, and submit your answer, please. All right, most of you have voted, so I'm just going to shut that down. All right, so now we'll move into the Q&A portion of our uh, presentation. So our first question is for, for Matt, and the question, Matt, for you is, what segment of donors should, be, should we interview to develop the persona? insiders, new donors, current donors, or recurring donors? Yeah, that's a great question, Clara. Thanks for raising it. Um, you know, just keeping to the theme of monthly giving, and that's the context in which I'm sharing this response, I think kind of the three main audiences that you want to focus on, and you'll notice a, a theme with all three of these, is uh, people who are really engaged in your organization are more likely to give a monthly gift than a one-time gift. So start with one, any current monthly donors that you have, uh, two, donors who've given multiple gifts in the past 12 months, and three, any volunteers who also make uh, financial contributions to your organization. I would start with those three segments if I were trying to build out donor personas for your monthly, uh, for your monthly donors. Perfect, thank you so much for that response, Matt. All right, um, our time is about up, so we'll just ask one last question, and that question will be for Sarah, and that question is, what if you don't have really easy items to tie to your giving levels? Is $200 pays for our rent for a month motivational? What other things do you suggest if you don't have something like care packages? So that's a great question. Uh, thanks, Clara. So of course, not every organization and nonprofit works the same way. So maybe your organization isn't, you know, buying single items. So I think that it is okay, you know, to occasionally talk about the costs in terms of running your organization. But as long as everything ties back to your mission. So what are you accomplishing? It doesn't always have to be a dollar goal equals you know, a single item or even a dollar equals paying a staff member. But maybe if you're a missionary, for example, the money raised is sending someone on that trip um, to spread, spread the word. Well, then you want to talk about that mission, what they're accomplishing and how they're helping. But it doesn't have to necessarily say, you know, this $10 you give will pay for their cab fare to get to the airport. It doesn't always have to be that specific. Perfect. Thank you for that response, Sarah. And thank you, everyone. If anyone has any questions that were not answered today, you can email your questions to marketing at mobilecause.com. All right, so that's all the time that we have today. If you're interested in discovering how to accelerate your fundraising and donor engagement programs, please fill out the post webinar survey. Or if you'd like to speak directly to a mobile cause expert, you can call 888-661-8804. Again, that's 888-661-8804 or visit www.mobilecause.com. Thanks again for attending today and best of luck in your annual fundraising campaigns. We look forward to seeing you again next month. Have a great day, everyone.